All new today. It happened to this family. You left your house locked up and somebody just moved in. It could happen to you. Did the police throw them out? They were not able to do anything. They're living in your house uninvited. And we can't make them leave. Oh my God, this is America. This is crazy. Plus, they call their adult daughter a freeloader and want her out. You are living in a home that's owned by your parents. And they're living over the garage. Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Bell. in America, approximately 40,000 people lose their jobs. Now think about that, 40,000 people. Right now, there are 15 million homes that are sitting empty because they are not able to be sold due to the economy. But wait until you hear this incredible, outrageous story of how one family has been affected. Now, you ready for this? Here it is. All right, dad gets a job offer in another state so they lock up the home that they were unable to sell in time. Mom packs up the family and they all move for a new opportunity. But while they're gone, a strange family actually moves into their home, the one that they had locked up for the winter. And they now claim it belongs to them and that they bought it. Now these alleged squatters refuse to move out. Now, nightmare scenarios like this can and do happen. Listen to this headline-making story. When the Donovan family moved back to Colorado, they found people living in their Littleton home. Those inside wouldn't budge. The family claimed they had bought it. They said they paid this man, Alfonso Carrillo. He's accused of repeatedly taking over homes he doesn't own, then selling them or renting them out. The Donovans have never met Alfonso Carrillo, but investigators believe he targeted them as part of a massive real estate scam. He allegedly sold or rented out properties that he didn't own, including the Donovans' Littleton home, which they left during a brief move to Indiana. What happened here is not an isolated case. We found homes being occupied by squatters all up and down the front range. The Donovans won possession of their home in court last month, but a series of legal hurdles have stalled the process. The family of four continues to live in a relative's basement. We just want to resume our life. Think about it now. We've got a husband and a wife, their children, and they're just bouncing around living out of suitcases while somebody else is in their home. Take a look. People stole our home, and we can't make them leave. We felt extremely angry and completely shocked. We had no idea that somebody could literally break in and start living in our home. When we got back to Colorado, we were broke. We had to borrow the money to deal with the issue. Just everything that could possibly go wrong has gone wrong. This is our home. I've, I built this whole wall. I did everything to this house myself. Yet, I feel like I'm a criminal standing here just because of the fact that I want my house back. It's really been a living hell. A lot of crying, it's a lot of screaming, it's a lot of anger, and it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight. Oh, it's the worst thing you can imagine. We are currently staying in a hotel. Put the bag in there. There you go. I often feel like it's the end of the world. I'll never recover from having to go through this. I feel violated. I feel like I am a victim of a crime, but it's just um, agonizing to look at the condition of the home, and we're still trying to get back in it. I still cry every day and wonder, how am I going to emotionally get over this? OK, so you left your house locked up, and somebody just came along and moved in. Yes. They're just living in your house. They've just taken over our home and just... You didn't sell it. We didn't no. sell it. You didn't receive any money for selling it. No. You didn't lease it. You didn't rent it. 
And by the way, this home wasn't in foreclosure. No, it was not. In fact, y'all had just taken a fair amount of money and upgraded everything in the house in order to sell it, right? Correct. Correct. But it didn't sell by the time you left, so you button up and leave, and they just moved in. How, how did you find out? We didn't find out until um, about five months after we left to go to Indiana, and I just had a strange premonition in February of this year, and I told my husband, you know, we need to, we haven't heard from the neighbors for a while, we need to reach out to them, and Troy made that phone call to our, one of our neighbors. How, how long had they been in the house when you found out that they were in it? They moved in November of 2011. So literally, my stepfather went in there the third week of October, winterized the home, and within a two-week period after that, they had been placed in the home. Okay, so they're there for November, December, January, and February. There's somebody living in your home, and you don't even know it. We're nope. not aware of it. Um, that's just unbelievable. It is. Okay, so, so then you try to get them out, right? Call the local police department over there, because... When I talk sure. to my neighbor, he says, I'm glad to see you've sold your home or rented it out. And I'm like, uh, no, we haven't. And so we sent the police over there, and they produced their adverse possession documents. At that point, the police read them and called us back and said, there's nothing we can do. They showed us these documents, and we can't remove them from your home. Here's what I understand adverse possession to mean. It is a law whereby a person can gain legal title to real property they don't originally own by exclusively occupying it for a prescribed amount of time. It's like if there's an abandoned property and somebody just moves into it and stays there long enough, there is a theory under which they can kind of claim that it's now theirs. But those elements of that law were not met in your case. This wasn't an abandoned property. No, it was not. You mean you're entitled to leave your house without somebody coming in and taking it over. Right. Um, so did the police throw them out? They did not. They were not able to do anything. They just said, we have to go through an eviction process. Right, which you did. Which we did when we returned to Colorado at the beginning of June. So right. why aren't they gone? They filed an appeal and, believe it or not, countersued us for we don't know what, which the, there's a dollar limit amount on that that then will bump it up to a county case. So they strung it out. It was a it was a time tactic to get it strung out. So too. they countersued you? Yeah. Yes. You've never done any business with them? No, don't. Not at all. They're living in your house uninvited? Correct. And they sued you? They they're, they tried to or they're going to try to. We still don't know what they have up their sleeve. So Okay, yeah. well, we, we asked for some help here. We've got a real estate lawyer here, Zach Shore. And uh, Zach? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Make sense out of this for me. Well, there's a lot going on here, obviously. Uh, on one level, they, you know, obviously these people in their home have no right to be there. Right. You know, they came in there under false pretenses. And, but there is this idea that you've talked about, which is adverse possession. And so you can claim an ownership interest in property after a long period of time if you're there and sort of treat it as your own. What happened here is that the police get involved and they see that document and they, can, they don't have the ability to handle that, right? It has to go to the court system which is what they had to do, and they have to go through the formal eviction process, which is, especially in this situation, just frustrating. And now I understand that you got through some of that, got it unraveled, but then they filed bankruptcy. Yes. And now are. that's a federal proceeding, and that stays everything else, right? It that, does. That puts a stop sign up. It does. There's an automatic stay. That means everybody has to stop. And I think what the, the person living in the house had listed the house as one of her assets, so that made it even more sort of can't touch this. Meantime, you're living on the floor. Yes. Wow. All right. Troy and Dana say being forced from their own home by squatters has left them not only homeless, but also in a state that could have deadly consequences. You're going to find out what I mean by that when we come back. When we came back, we were pretty much broke. We didn't have any money, borrowed money from family members, which now we are indebted to. My biggest fear right now is being without a home. These people 
viewing our home, it's caused a lot of tension in my family. My children are being adversely affected by it. To wake up on a basement floor on a blow-up mattress with your daughters laying next to you, sleeping, it's heartbreaking. It's something that's etched on their memory for the rest of their lives. It makes you feel like you're really failing, even though you're trying to do the right thing. Maybe this is the end for us. Maybe it's the end for our family. Basically wanting to just give up. See, it's hard knowing that you just don't want to live anymore. Well, that was Troy and Dana talking about how devastating losing their home to alleged squatters has been for them and their two young daughters. Now, Troy and Dana still have no idea when they will be able to move back into the home that they never sold, never leased, they just went out of town to work. I'm sorry this happened. My God, this is, this is America. This is crazy. You've actually thought about taking your own life. This has gotten to you so badly. I Talk have. to me about that. It's just I felt like I planned my life accordingly. You know, I waited to have a child until my 30s, and we had a home, and um, had our second child a little bit later after that and just invested in this home and felt like we were doing the right thing financially and it's just been devastating to know that everything that we've done has been ripped away by a few people and it's hard to process that and to watch my children ask me when when are we going to get back into our home who's living in our home why why are they doing this to us and i have to say I don't know. There's people in the world that want something for free, and we've been victims. I don't know how to explain it to them. I want to talk to you about this, because this is not OK. What you're saying to me and what you're saying to yourself is not OK, and I want that to stop right now. You guys, when you're in a problem, when you got a problem, you go, oh my god, what if? You know, well, well, what if it doesn't ever work out? Well, what if we don't ever get back in our home? Or what if I lose my job? Or what if I get a divorce? Or what if, you know, whatever. People play the what if game, but they never play it out to the end. And monsters live in the dark. And when you play it out to the end, it's never as bad as what you imagine at the time. Now, what you've done is you have just put brick and mortar on an equal footing with your life. Look at that house. nice house. It's, it's brick. It's wood. It's a pile of inanimate things. It is not on a par with your life. Are you kidding me? No. Look at that picture right there. I know. Now, you're telling me that it's over? You're done? You've thought about killing yourself because somebody took that house away from you? Look at those children. Let me tell you, home is right there in your lap. I know. And I know. nobody can take that away from you. It's, it's just, that is the idea of my children possibly not having a place to live, us not recovering from this, and what if Dana, something... Stop. They have a place to live. It's in their mother's lap. It's in their father's arms. They have a place to live. You don't have the right to talk about ending your own life, and I don't want to hear you say that another time, and don't you let her say that another time. I'm not going to. Don't let her say that another time. Okay. Now, since I'm up on my soapbox, let me preach about one more thing here. You've got to change your language. You, when I read through all of the notes, you know, we asked y'all a million questions, and you were so honest and forthcoming. But I was shocked at the things that you said. You said stupid, ruined, devastated, suicide, embarrassed, humiliated, ripped. Words are very powerful. And so when you say that to yourself, you ramp it up to the point that, my God, you, you, it, it, you don't leave yourself anywhere to go. Quickly, let's play the what if game. What if you never get your house back? What if those people live there forever and every time you go driving by, they go, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> right, what, what if that happens? 
You know, I think for me is I want a resolution. I want to know what is going to happen so I can plan for plan B. Okay, and here's the good news. You don't have to wait to see what they do for you to make a plan. Take control back of your life. Decide maybe that you're never going to move back into that house. You're just going to sell it. Whatever you want to say. But you've got to decide. You're not, at, you're not these people's pawns. You're not at their, their mercy. You get to decide what you want to do. You are a young, vibrant, intelligent couple. You bounce back. Move on. You say, well, that's easy for you to say. You're not living in somebody's basement, <laughs> Dr. Phil. You know, it's hard. We need a little help. Well, we want to give you a little help. So we have lots of folks we work with. And Bank of America, they're the lender. Right. On, on y'all's house. Uh, we've talked to them about this. And they have, first off, pledged $4,000 to cover your temporary living expenses. Oh, wow. Okay? Wow. Um, Now think about how much think about how much time that buys you, okay? Four thousand smackers here. Also, the bank has agreed to help you retain your home, and they have assigned a home retention specialist that is going to walk you and guide you through this entire process step by step by step. Because you aren't devastated, you aren't ruined. It isn't over. Help has arrived here. We're going to get through this, okay? All right, Thank fair you. enough. Thank you. That's, that's the best news that we've heard in months. You feel better? I do. I feel a lot better. You feel Thank better? Thank you. Excellent. All right. All right, fair enough. All right, next, we're going to meet a couple who have been forced to live above their garage so that their freeloading 31 year old daughter, that's their term, uh, refuses to get out of their home. They got punted. But this was by their own daughter. We'll talk to them when we come back. My daughter and her three children live with us. My daughter is an ultimate freeloader. We moved into the apartment over the garage so that Kylie and her three children could move into the house. Kylie does not work. Kylie does not pay her bills. Money has been missing. Yes, Nancy and John say they're at a breaking point and they want to kick their 31-year-old freeloading daughter out. They just want to kick her out. Okay, now let me give you a visual, okay? This is the house where they, they have let their daughter live for nine years. She's lived there rent-free and even has $6,000 unpaid electrical bill. Okay, now where do the parents live? Okay, over the garage, over here. That's where the parents live. Okay, you, you heard me right. The, the parents, it, it was their house. But they moved over to the garage and she took over the house. Now, before this show's over, I'm going to tell you who I think is in the right here and who is wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you who's way wrong. My daughter is an ultimate freeloader, and she is destroying our lives. Kylie's 31. My daughter and her three children live with us for about nine years now. We moved into the apartment over the garage so that Kylie and her three children could move into the house. Kylie does not work. Kylie does not pay her bills. She has a $6,000 outstanding electric bill. Kylie doesn't pay us for anything. Since Kylie has lived with us, we have spent approximately $30,000. Kylie is a very deceptive person. I have trouble believing anything she says anymore. Kylie will not admit to stealing from us, but we do know that money has been missing. I think Kylie's a very vicious person. She's turned into... A monster. The car that Kylie has right now is registered and insured in my name. I told her I was going to take the plates off the car because I found out her license had been revoked as I went out to the car. She ran out and she jumped in the car. I was down like this and I was trying to unscrew the, the bolt on the license plate. She started up the car and drove in me. You know, it hit me right on the shin. 
She had the steering wheel and she's going, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. If she missed that brake pedal, she would have drove right over me. And I believe she would have. This incident was my final straw. I've reached a point where I've done everything I possibly can do. I don't know what to do anymore. All right, John, Nancy, I'm, I'm glad you're here. And like this other couple, I'm, I'm glad to meet y'all. I'm sorry for the occasion. Uh, your daughter's here. Yes. And we're going to enter the conversation here in a minute. We're going to hear her side, because I don't care how flat you make a pancake, it's got two sides. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure there is another side to this. But l let me ask you, how did this happen? Why, why are you living over the garage behind the house you own and your daughter who doesn't own the house is living in your house. My basic whole idea when I sold my house in, in Massachusetts, I went to me, found this big house with the in-law apartment, with this in mind, mm -hmm. okay? I put her and her children into the apartment. Then she got married to the father of the children. And I said to my wife, we were both working, and I said, Listen, the kid, they're getting big now, they're getting along fine. Let's let them take over the house and we'll take the apart because they have the three kids to bring them up in this beautiful home. Right. This is where it all started. You said, I, I want you here. You invited her to come. Then you said, hey, I want you to take over the house. I want you to move into it. We'll go live over the garage. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own plan. That was yours. So that's the deal. So what's the problem? The problem was, we did not realize that they were not going to pay us. They uh, started off, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it was always an excuse, we don't have any money, we don't have any money. So this kept getting worse and worse and worse. Then the house started getting destroyed. They had animals in there, and the house was just getting deteriorated constantly, and we, we threatened many times to ask them to leave, get out, and uh, we, we got nowhere with that. Uh, she's, she's very adamant about, you know, we, she is our daughter and we should be taking care of her. So why not just say, okay, you need to leave? Well, we, we tried that. I tried very hard to get them. I told my wife, I said, I want them out. And my wife said, we cannot do that to the kids. So you wanted I, to stay? I, I want the children to stay. I wanted my daughter there, but she needs to make some changes in her life. She, you know, is, is... Very so you two aren't on the now. same line here as, as far, far as... As far as her staying? Yeah. Um, I want her to go now, but I still, I want the kids to be safe and I want, I want to know that they're, they're okay. It's, that's very important to me. Right. And that's the catch-22. You, you're happy to kick her out because you think she's being irresponsible and not taking care of the property Absolutely. and lying to you and all of that. But... She's got the children, and they're kind of hostages, right? Okay, kick me out, and they go with me. She would use the kids against us. Fine. You'll never, ever see them children again. All right, well, we'll hear what she has to say. We've heard from John and Nancy. Uh, but Kylie says she's not the monster their parents make her out to be. My parents call me a loser. My mother calls me a liar, a cheat, a thief. Anything she could say to put me down, she will call me. Right now, I honestly think my parents hate me. I'm 31, and they treat me like I'm 16. My parents call me a loser. My mother calls me a liar, a cheat, a thief. Anything she could say to put me down, she will call me. My parents try to control everything with my kids, what time they go to bed, what they eat, what they wear. My parents definitely get high off of being in control. My relationship with my parents have gotten violent. I've pushed my dad and my mom, but I've never punched them. When we get into an argument, I usually leave because it will get violent and I will end up hurting someone. I get very angry. I feel if I stay around, I will go to jail. I'm not who my parents say I am. I'm not this monster that they're portraying me as. OK, Kylie, you've been listening to the conversation from backstage, right? Yes. Okay. They're basically saying that you are an irresponsible, dishonest freeloader that needs to shape up and or get out. What do you say? I think that that's not true at all. What is true? That I'm going through a rough time in my life right now, 
and they need to understand that I'm not who they say I am. Okay. How are you not? What's different? Are you paying rent that you agreed to pay? Right now, no, but I was. Okay. When my husband was there, I was. Are you taking care of the house? I was, yes. Not right now, no. Why not? Because I don't, I'm not having an income. I'm in nursing school. I just started this Well, program. you've been going to school for 10 years. Yeah. How many degrees do you have? None. Okay. Um, so you said you're in a rough spot in your life now, but that's kind of a protracted rough spot. Mm -hmm. Right? I, listen, I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you, but there's a point at which, you know, when I look at stuff like this, I just wonder sometimes if, if people think that I'm not very smart. Because aren't there a lot of things that you hope I don't ask you? Yes. Because if I ask you, you don't have good answers. Right. Because you've made bad choices. But if you really want help, if you really want to change things, you would want to get everything on the table mm -hmm. and say, all right, look, if I'm a hot mess, then I'm a hot mess. But I mean, whatever it is, this is what it is. But instead, you come on really kind of in a defensive mode where you're going to try to prove them wrong and go home and do the same thing you've been doing. And that's not working for you, is it? No. Doesn't your house stink? No. Does your house stink? Yes. It does. Does it smell like a kennel? It smells no. like a kennel. Does it smell like a kennel that needs to be hosed out really bad? Extremely. Well, we actually have a tape of the house. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. The house was beautiful when she moved in it, and now it's just a complete mess. Her house is disgusting. It's deplorable the way she keeps her house. Her children's rooms are disastrous. I did go and try to help her daughters clean their room, and I was appalled at what was in there that needed to come out of there. Hmm. What are you making of that? I haven't been there for the last couple of weeks. I come home at night. I go to school, and I come home. I don't care about the house. Are, are you unkind to these folks? I get defensive when they come at me, yes. There's some question as to whether you tried to run him over with a car I or not. I did not try to run him over with the car. But did you run him over with a car? No, I didn't. Did you hit him with a car? No, I didn't. Did you bump him with a car? No, I didn't. So you just made that up? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did not try to hit him with a car. I looked out the window just as she put the car in drive. And she bumped his leg, and she was just holding onto that steering wheel, and she was just so full of anger. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, Screaming I said that, but I wasn't going to run you over. Blown the horn. I didn't blow the Screaming, horn. Holding the horn. Holding the horn. I wasn't. Everybody in the neighborhood was standing there watching what the heck is going on over there. I wasn't going to run you over. When I realized it was in drive, I put it in reverse, and I left. I didn't try to run you over. It was an accident. It was a complete accident. But you were upset at the time. I was upset, yeah. You were in a rage. I was. Yelling and screaming. Yep. You think that contributed to maybe not knowing what gear the car was in? Probably, yeah. But I wasn't trying to no, run and him I, over. And listen, I understand that, because I, I, I assume if you wanted to run him over, he'd be run over. Absolutely. Because he was in front of the car, and you know, he doesn't seem cat-like to me. I'm guessing you could have got him if you wanted to, and you didn't. I didn't. So that my, says, I mean, the fact that yes, she didn't, didn't kill you. My then biggest, dad, I wouldn't want anything to happen. My biggest fear after this incident was the fact that if she had missed hitting the brake, I was dead. Do you want her to stay or go? I want yeah. her to go. I want her to have her own life. I want her to learn how to stand up on her own two feet and pay her bills and take good care of her children. So this is a new thing for you? Yes. Because you haven't really held her to account, either one of you, along the way, right? No. And now she's irresponsible, and you go, oh, my God, how did that happen? Well, take a look at this. We'll see how it happens. Since Kylie has lived with us, we have spent $30,000. I do everything for the children. I watch her kids every day that she's in school. I do cook for them three or four times a week. Laundry comes over to my house, and I will wash for them. She couldn't get a car on her own, so I co-signed for her. And then she had the car repossessed, and I paid to get the car back. 
And then she had the car repossessed again, and I paid to get the car back again. We paid for car insurance for her, her daughter to swim at the YMCA. We have just paid astronomical amounts of money out for them. Okay, is that all true? No. Not at all. Well, let me ask, all right, let me rephrase that. Is that all materially true? Yes. Okay, we're gonna take a break, and I'm gonna ask you two to excuse us, because I would like to speak to Kylie alone. Okay. And um, so I'm gonna have you guys go backstage, and I'm gonna chat with her for a minute, and then, then I'm gonna chat with everybody again. We'll be right back. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, I'm back. I've been talking with Nancy and John, who are Kylie's parents. Now, Kylie is 31 years old, correct? Mm -hmm. You have children, three. Yep. And you are living in a home that's owned by your parents. Can we be honest with each other for a minute? Because, see, here's the thing. I, I think there are times in people's lives where, for whatever reason, things happen that bring you to a precipice, bring you to a threshold, where you have an opportunity to either change something or stay on the same course that you're on. And once that moment is gone, once that window is gone, it's gone. And it's not gonna come back. And I think this is one of those moments. And here's what I think's going on, and you tell me if you agree or disagree. I think you hate your life. I think you hate having to be dependent on these people. I think you hate that they treat you like a child. Although at some level, you know you behave like a child. You are irresponsible. You're financially irresponsible. You don't seem to be able to string together enough in the way of accomplishment and achievement to get to a goal. And so you're just kind of treading water in the same place. And you resent them for it, and you vent at them all the time. You don't hate them. You're screaming at your father, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. You grew up as his princess. True? He worshiped the ground you walked on, and now you're in a car screaming at him that you hate him. But I don't think you hate him. I think you hate your life. I think you hate where you are. And I think you think you're really stuck. I am stuck. So how am I doing? You got it. I want to change. What? My life. What about it? The way it is, I want to have a good relationship with them. I want to better myself and for my kids. So what do you want them to do? I just want them to... I don't, to back off, let me be me. Let me show them I can change and be the mom that I want to be. But what's gonna, what's that mean, back off? So if they just stop complaining? It's, whatever I do is never good enough for them. They're never proud of me. Uh -huh. It's like I can never do anything right with them. And if they back off, leave you alone, what are they gonna see in the next 30 days that they didn't see in the past 30 days? that I can take care of the house, that I can take care of my kids. And, and you're, this is gonna come over you miraculously? You could have no, done this I've all along? No, I've always wanted to do it. But, but you, they you, nag and nag and nag, and I just I gave up, I don't care. And you're biting the hand that feeds you because you don't like the way they say it. Because no. they can say, hey, look, you don't like us? Then fine, move out. What are you gonna do then? I'm going to be on my own, I guess. Well, what you're doing is you're counting on the fact that she will not let that happen. Because you have hostages, right? No, I don't have hostages. Yes, you I do. Don't use my Come kids on. Against them. We agreed we were going to be honest. I am being honest. You have hostages. Them. They can't kick you out, or they can't, or you take the kids with you, and you know they won't do that. Be honest. Yeah. Do you want help changing this? Yeah. And you've been a real brat with them. Then a spoiled little brat with them. But I don't want them 
to think that I'm taking advantage of them because I'm not. You are. I'm not, though. Yes, you are. You have no other choice right now because you've worked yourself into a hole, but you are taking advantage of them. They're living over the garage. I didn't ask for that. I didn't say you did, but they are. If you want to work this out, then you need to work it out. And to do that, you need to stop being a spoiled brat. You need to talk to these people and say, look, I have been a spoiled brat. I am sorry. And I, I want to tell you what you do that hurts me because this isn't all you. They have to change here as well. You need to start behaving differently. You need to start making different choices. I'm willing to help you do that, but you've got to work with these people. And if you don't, I'm going to tell them to kick you out and the kids with you. It's just that simple. I'm going to offer you help with it. Will you take it? Think about what I've said. We're going to take a break. John and Nancy are going to come back. We're going to talk some more. We'll be right back. Kylie has been a big part of destroying our marriage. My wife and I are so stressed out, emotionally, physically, and mentally. My wife and I have no privacy. I've been upset many times with my wife. I keep telling her, I married you. I didn't marry Kylie and her kids. Kylie had full control over my wife. I told my wife that if Kylie is going to stay in my home, I am going to leave her because I refuse to put up with any more of her nonsense and lies. If she thinks she's staying in the house. It is not going to happen. Have you been fair with them? Maybe. Well, I think you have blamed them and vented against them when you're just generally unhappy with your life and they're just handy. You have been an insolent, condescending, smart mouth brat. If you agree with that, stand up. Okay. All right, y'all sit down. Just so you get a feel for the room. Okay. You can buy a lot of credibility by owning the things you need to own. This is a test. Have you been fair with them? No. I mean, do you really get that you haven't? Mm -hmm. You have been unfair with these people. Yeah. And I think you owe them an apology. Sorry. I don't know what else to say. Look your father in the eye. Look him in the eye. If you're sorry about hurtful things you've said to him, tell him. I'm sorry. For what? Tell him. Look him in the eye. Don't look away. All the things I've said and done. Tell him, you were good to me for many years, and I am sorry. You were good to me my whole life. I'm sorry. What are you thinking right now? What are you feeling right now? Look at it. Well. What do you want? I want that sorry to, to be truthful and honest so that you never have to come back on it again. What do you want for her? I want her to love me like I love her. Do you I love her? I love her with all my heart. She said one of the things that hurts her the most is that she knows you're not proud of her. I'm not proud of the bad decisions she's been making, but I am proud of her as my daughter, and I brag on her constantly about what a beautiful girl she can be, and she should be, and she is not to me and my wife. He tells everybody he loves me, but he doesn't like me. Well, let me tell you what I think needs to happen here, okay? Can I just cut to the chase scene here? Absolutely. This is a family problem. This isn't a Kylie problem. Whatever she's doing is at least in part a product of her learning history and you were the teachers. Now, here's the deal that I'm going to offer you. Okay. Give me 90 days of bringing in serious professional help 
for the family, not to fix her. You need a lot of fixing, <laughs> but so do they. But to work with this family. And at the end of that 90 days, if you're the same place you are right now, then you have to agree to take her out of the house. Kids and all, if they go live in a shelter, you got to be tough enough to do that because necessity is the mother of invention and she is never going to grow up until she has to. Okay. Okay? okay? So that's the deal. Okay. Give me 90 days <laughs> and see where you are at the end of that time. Will you do that? Yes, I sure would. And you got to participate. Definitely. Okay, so right. you need to do a lot of listening and, and, and try some new things. You willing to do that? Yeah. For you, for your kids, for everybody. I'm going to bring in troops. Dad, okay. we need them. And, and we're going to turn this around. You're too smart to be living so dumb. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Well, I, I want to thank all the guests today. And Troy and Dana, we're going to continue to monitor your situation. And I think it's going to get a, a whole lot better. And a special thanks to Bank of America for their generosity and also their willingness to work with this very uh, deserving family. As I said earlier, you guys are a nice couple and a nice family, and you deserve some help, so we're going to do that. Uh, and as I said, we got a plan for you guys. You know, we're going to, reinforcements are on the way, so we're going to work on this and, and, and get this turned around. And we're going to do a lot of work uh, to help you. I want to do it with you, not to you. Uh, once you take good care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, every way. So we're going to work on this. You're overwhelmed. You need some help. It's on the way. Okay? Yeah. All right. For more information on today's show and coping mechanisms for dealing with stressful situations, go to drphil.com. Thanks for being here. So long. Yeah.